Developing in Libya, an FBI team has arrived in the country determined to find the people who killed four Americans and left the U.S. consulate in flames. We're going to have a full report on that just ahead. In Cairo, workers are cleaning up Tahrir Square following days of protests over that anti-Muslim film. Police rounded up hundreds of protesters today and they will send dozens to court. And back here in the U.S., federal officials are questioning one of the men behind the film that sparked all the rage. Police escorted Nakula Baseli Nakula from his California home overnight. Authorities want to know if he violated his probation. NBC's Mike Taibbi has been following this angle for days now. He is live in Los Angeles. So, Mike, with a good day to you. Beyond the, uh, Mr. Nakula, who are the others that are involved in this film, and do we know their whereabouts? Well, we don't know the whereabouts at the moment, Alex, but we do know that Nakula, Vaseline Nakula, is only one of at least three key figures who are linked at this moment to the making of this video. Nakula himself has told the Associated Press that he was just in charge of logistics, although he's also the person who, in the day when everything exploded, was telling people that his name was Sam Basile, that he raised the money from Jewish donors, and all of which turned out to be untrue. But he certainly had some role. He is... Um, by a, a, the description of people who know him, uh, an Egyptian-born Coptic Christian and ultra-conservative, as are other key figures, one of whom is Joseph Nasrallah. Now, you may have heard his name before. He was a featured speaker at two of the past three years' protests on 9-11 of the so-called Ground Zero Mosque. You can see him there. That's the 2010 rally and protest where he spoke about uh, the dangers of Islam, that Islam was going to take over this country the same way it took over Egypt, the country of his birth as well. Nasrallah owns the studios where this video was shot and cut the deal for the film permit to have it shot there in the summer of 2011. In addition to Joseph Nasrallah, there's also Stephen Klein. Klein is an ex-Marine uh, and uh, uh, has also been on the uh, watch list of several hate speech groups, monitoring groups, uh, for years. He also has a program on that same broadcast operation that Nasrallah known. So that's the connection among the three of these people. At the moment, Nasrallah and Stephen Klein, uh, their whereabouts are unknown right now. Okay. Alex? And, and Mike, he's, he's being questioned and talked about possible parole violation we've reported, but with regard to his security, right. I mean, might he have to be provided with security? And if so, is, do you know who would do that security for him, who'd give that to him? Yeah. You know, I mean, one would guess it seems to make sense that the people responsible for this video, which has resulted in so much violence around the world right now, would have some blowback. And uh, Stephen Klein, before he left, told a local reporter that he was leaving town because he had had believable death threats. Mm. We don't know of anything directly, but we also heard that, uh, that uh, Nakula himself is not going back to his home in Cerritos, which is a, su a suburb of Los Angeles, about 25 east of, miles east of the city. Uh, we don't know where he's going, but he has a family who are still in the house, or have been still in the house at the moment. Uh, none of them are talking. None of them have apologized at this point or expressed any regret or remorse over what's happened. Hmm. Alex? Okay, Mike Taibbi, many thanks for the story there from Los Angeles.